Hey everyone, this is Scott from CertMedia.com and in this video I'm going over Short Pixel Image Optimizer. I'm going to be giving you a general configuration and recommendation for this plugin and I'm going to be giving you my thoughts and opinions. I am not comparing this, this plugin to something like Imagify in this video. Those videos are planned though for the future after I cover some of the other plugins. So we're just going to hop right in and discuss some of the advantages to Short Pixel and some of its disadvantages. Uh, Short Pixel is great. Honestly, it's a very awesome plugin. It's a very, it can be very expensive if you have a very large website, but their team is great, great support, simple to use user interface. And I've never really had anybody who's used it and was dissatisfied with their service. And that's great. Um, but I'm also gonna preface that by saying, I don't really see anybody ever dissatisfied with services for image compression because they're all very similar. Um, we covered short pixel adaptive images, but this is its sister plugin. This is what actually compresses the images on your server. If you've ever tried to use uImage Optimizer on certain hosts, <coughs> WP Engine, you'll notice that it's not very welcome there. And the reason for that is honestly because it uses server resources. It does the compression on your server unless you're using the cloud version, which is the paid version. This is a paid plugin. There is a limited free option, which I'm using for the sake of demonstration, of you get like 100 image credits a month, which means you can compress 100 total images a month. That is not a lot of images. Even for this demo, which I imported just a few posts for from its importer thing, I have 261 thumbnails. That right there is almost three months worth of images already gone in the free version. But this is meant to just give you a taste of the plugin for whether or not you'd like to use it. So you have the compression type of lossy, glossy, and lossless. Glossy is their term. It's just a middle of the ground, hey, this was a this is technically the lossy compression, but it's a lot less aggressive. So if you enable glossy, you're getting a loss, lossy compression, but you should notice a lot less issues in image quality. Personally though, even with the lossy compression with short pixel, I don't notice too many issues with most image types. It's a very effective plugin. Now I will preface that by saying I notice it more when I know users who during their upload process run through something like tinypng.org and then upload their images. So if you're going to be using this plugin, Honestly, it's probably better to just upload the image, whether it's five megs or 10 megs or ever how big it is without pre-compressing it, just to avoid any strange issues that you are bound to run into. Um, so I typically recommend running the lossy compression. Uh, also including thumbnails, this is recommended. Uh, what this does is it will WordPress themes and WordPress core declare image sizes that are supposed to be resized from the original image. So let's say you upload a 1200 by 1200 square image and you have your theme which resizes it into a 600 by 600 square and another one for 300 by 300. Those are thumbnails that are auto generated by the theme and WordPress core. The theme just declares the image sizes it needs and WordPress core does the actual resizing process. So yes, your thumbnails should be compressed because oftentimes the theme uses the thumbnails instead of the full sized image on the front end. So to demonstrate, I'm just gonna open up this listing pro demo that I have going right now. Um, these are thumbnails that it's automatically generated into the correct pixels. And these are more thumbnails. These are not the full sized image. So you wanna make sure these are compressed because oftentimes these are what your users are actually seeing. They have an option for an image backup that's just saves all your images on your server to retrieve that way you can restore them. This is a great option if you're just testing the plugin. Um, but I will say right off the bat that if you use this and you're on a host that charges you for a lot of storage, uh, looking at you keen. So with your little five, I think it's like five, maybe it's 10 gig plans now. Um, <laughs> it, it can be quite expensive if you don't pay attention to how many, if you have five, if you've got four gigs of images and you back them all up, you're going to have you're going to have overages if you have very little storage. So keep that in mind before you do this. My typical recommendation is if you're going to run this, um, use something like Updraft Plus, back it up to your Google Cloud or whatever you use, and then restore it if you're noticing image degradation instead of using a backup on your server. I really wish that there was some kind of uh, off-site storage that they had, but that would obviously inflate the cost more. 
Uh, remove EXIF data. This just removes metadata that's included, uh, GPS information, your camera type, when it was taken, other data that you would never really be able to find unless somebody was specifically looking for it. Now, there is some research done to suggest Googlebot does look at EXIF data for images but that's only for really ranking in Google image search as far as what I saw. I wouldn't really be concerned with this, especially if you're just downloading images off of Pexels or uh, Unsplash and you're just using free stock images. You don't need that data, they're not your images. If you're a photographer though, you may wanna keep this data. Resizing larger images. We need to explain how this works. This will not fix in GT Matrix any warning you get about serving scaled images. This just reduces the total files uh, dimensions of the main image that you upload. So if you upload a 5K resolution image to your server and you set this to be 1920 to that, so what this will do is it'll take your image and it will resize the width to be 1920 pixels and the height will be whatever it does to preserve aspect ratio. Um, that's typically what I recommend doing on my, one of my websites, dailydrivertips.com. I actually use image optimizer to process images on upload. And I do this because car manufacturers, when they release their images, they are taken on professional cameras and have some really large, uh, dimensions like 6,000 pixels widths and it's absurd. So I just resize it to 1920 because that's the size I optimize websites for because that's the size most people use. Um, you should enable this option in my opinion, but just keep in mind that if you do need 4K resolution images, just disable this option, but it will not fix any serve scaled images warnings you may have. Under the advanced option, you can include custom folders. This will, so short pixel by default will look for images and PDFs in the specified media library folders. You can add a custom folder here and it will give you a nice little uh, drop down of uh, folders you can select from your server so that way they can be compressed as well. U Image Optimizer has something similar, WP Smush has something similar. It's just to help compress images that may not be in the WordPress media library. You can convert PNG images to JPEG. My general recommendation is, is that you should use JPEG for almost everything because it can compress better than PNG. The advantage to PNG though is that the images typically have a more rich color palette and the text tends to be better, and it supports transparency. What's cool though is it will convert all PNGs that do not have transparent pixels to JPEG. This is really great. Because the images are being converted and you don't have to worry about losing transparency, you can get much better performance by reducing your page size. However, just because you converted them doesn't mean it's gonna solve all your problems. The plugin will search for references of the images in post and will try to replace them. Oftentimes though, this just doesn't work for me. But more importantly, what I notice is if you enable this option, if you have theme options, for instance, where you have an image, it's in your theme options panel more in the customizer, or you have additional CSS, it will not replace those. So you could have broken images after you do this. It's hard to go back and convert images from PNG to JPEG. Typically what I recommend doing is you just go into the media library, you find the image, you run the conversion process individually and you check the post to make sure it worked. If it works, you can try doing it for the rest of them. Just keep that in mind that this could cause you issues, but if it honestly can improve your performance. And then there's another option to force the conversion of images with transparency. Never check this option, ever. You'll just not have transparent images anymore and that would be silly. Uh, you could do CMYK to RGB to adjust your images colors for uh, computer and screen, uh, mobile screens. It's basically just for web only format images. Most of the time, if you're exporting an image out of Photoshop, it has this web optimized feature already enabled or you can export it that way. It's totally fine. Uh, you can enable WebP images. WebP images are great for reducing your file size. They can make them 25% larger. I've seen them substantially better, actually. I've seen sites where they have one megabyte large images, but by converting it to PNG, uh, WebP, it's gotten it down by like 80%. It really depends, though, on the image type, how large the image is, how, how large it is, and resolution, so on and so forth. Uh, the only thing you need to be worried about, though, is if you enable WebP images, it will do this for free, so it will not use additional credits, 
but you have to have a plugin that will support WebP images. So as you can see, you can deliver WebP images on the front end as a sub option, and then you can use the picture format syntax. Picture format, it does work for some browsers, other browsers not so much. Um, you could choose to revert this at any time, but keep in mind that if you use this options, it, it's just, it's not a very decent option, but then you have the, without altering the page code, which is when it does an HT access rewrite to try and serve WebP over the .jpg extension. And it will say that your server can't support it. So that's a shame, my server can't. I don't know why they use the giant button image here, but you know. And there's an article about how to get this set up. Honestly, I hate setting up WebP images this way. Um, using something like Cloudflare and its pro plan is just so much easier. It will automatically compress them, serve them on their edge, and that way you don't have to worry about the silliness that occurs with doing this. The other thing is if you do convert WebP images, it will do it for thumbnails too. So if you have an image and it's when you resize it, it creates 10 different thumbnails, so you have 11 total images, you now have 22 images because now you have the WebP versions as well, which can definitely start eating into your storage. But if you want to get WebP images set up, this is a good option. Use the picture format and see if it works. Uh, that is a good point though, if it works. And then make sure you have a caching plugin like Cache Enabler that does support this. You can optimize Retina images. It will check to see if there is a at 2x file, file size for Retina.js to support Retina images. Both sites and themes that I see that declare Retina support don't actually declare Retina support and they just get a bunch of 404s. Retina images are kind of a gimmick anyway, in my opinion. I'd never see sites that actually properly optimize for retina images. So if you have them, you can compress them, but honestly, most of the time I don't see people who actually have them. You can then choose to optimize other thumbnails. So these are thumbnails that are not necessarily declared by the theme. This happens if you had a theme and the theme declared file sizes, but then you swap to a new theme, or maybe it was a plugin even, this will compress those thumbnails as well if it finds them in the media library. But keep in mind that if you're using this, you should probably clean up those thumbnails anyways because it's just wasting space unless for some really obscure reason you're using an odd image size in your post. I just I just wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, it just use a regenerate thumbnails plugin to clean them up. But we'll go ahead and enable it because if you're in one of those niche scenarios, you'll probably want these enabled. Optimizing PDFs, it will compress PDF documents. Yep, that's perfect. You can write an exclusion pattern here to exclude and bind the file name. Totally acceptable, I will love it. Nothing too fancy about it though. The HTTP auth credentials. So if, you, if your site is not publicly accessible and you have a password protection, you need to provide the username and password here and then their server will be able to compress your images. If you don't provide them, it will not work. Optimize the image on upload. That's totally acceptable and what should be done. You can also process images that are being uploaded by users on the front end. I go back and forth this. Um, primarily what happens is if you do this, it does take a lot longer for the server to respond back to the user on the front end with feedback. Um, this just, if you have BuddyPress for instance, they upload an image to their profile and they want it to display. It will take a lot longer for them to get feedback that the image was uploaded. I don't typically recommend this option in those scenarios because it can interfere with the user experience and it especially begins to be a slowdown if you have a lot of users uploading and connected on the server at the same time. So it's a give and a take. Typically I don't recommend enabling this option strictly because it harms user experience, The more, especially the more that there are. And then you can choose to exclude thumbnail sizes. These are thumbnails that you want to exclude from optimization. Um, as you can see, Listing Pro has a lot of different thumbnails. Um, really, there's never a real reason for you to go ahead and exclude it unless one specific image size is causing you issues, but I've never really run into that myself. Uh, the Cloudflare API, I'm just gonna briefly explain how this works. What this does is when ShortPixel compresses the images, it will just tell Cloudflare, hey, this URL was compressed well, just say, hey, I need you to purge this URL and Cloudflare's like, okay. But the reason it's telling it that way is if the image was resized or if it was compressed, Cloudflare will be able to update it and say, oh, okay, we'll go ahead. 
And there we go. Your one-time credits, I have some credits on here. It will tell you your usage, how much it's roughly saved. This bandwidth save number, I honestly don't pay any attention to. It seems kind of silly. But the disk space used is quite accurate, as is the average compression. And then it will tell you how many credits you've used, how many you have remaining, and so on and so forth. Uh, I, it's a great plugin. I don't really have any gripes with it. It's just a paid plugin. Most people don't like to pay for stuff in WordPress, I find. But if you're looking for good image compression with an easy to use user interface that will keep your Cloudflare API up to date, SurePixel is a great option. Uh, we will be running comparison tests in the future though. We'll be comparing two like images and we'll compare certain plugins versus one another. If you have a suggestion, please feel free to ask and uh, put it in the comments below. Maybe you wanna see um, SurePixel versus TinyPNG. Uh, we will not be drawing actual animations of them fighting, but you know, maybe I'll get like a pencil and do a stick figures. I don't know. But if you have any questions about this plugin, maybe um, what you should use on your specific website if you have a front end optimization, uh, front end uploading, and you want to know if you should use it or not, ask in the comments below. I'll try to help you out. Otherwise, thank you all so much for watching and goodbye.